All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me on tonight's healing live stream. I'm coming from you to you from uh, Southwest Missouri, Joplin, Missouri, right in the heart of the Midwest. And we've been teaching on 15 Secrets to Divine Healing by John G. Lake. Of course, if you've been following, you know that John G. Lake is one of the most prominent uh, ministries concerning uh, acts of power, healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. Uh, he lived in uh, his ministry was predominantly exercised in the uh, at the turn of the century and in the early 1900s, and he formed uh, uh, healing rooms in at least two different cities, Portland, Oregon, and Spokane, Washington. And each of these locations saw over 100,000 people healed in a span of about five years. Uh, he also had an extensive ministry in Africa, and uh, many people looked to him and his teachings as some of the most profound truths regarding God's power, some of the most profound truths regarding uh, the new man, and some of the most profound truths regarding healing. So we need to look to these people. You know, Hebrews 11 is devoted to an entire group of people whose acts of faith honor God, whose acts of faith uh, were worthy and, and noteworthy. And they made it there in that chapter in, in Hebrews 11. And we need to be uh, those who, like them, uh, uh, carry on and, and also inspect their lives. You know, these people's lives are there for us to look at and to inspect and to and to follow. Jesus being our chief example, our prime example, uh, the most uh, perfect example of what it looks like to be a, a Christian or a follower or a, a new man or a, a new humanity under the new covenant. So he is our, our greatest example. But he did say, uh, the same works I will do and uh, the same works, uh, you will do the same works that I did and even greater. So we also have an expectation that those of us following Jesus will begin to step into mind-blowing miracles, mind-blowing feats of power for the sake of the subjugation of the earth to God's kingdom. We are those who have been given the authority and the responsibility to swallow up death with life, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. It is up to us. There is no other plan. Jesus says, said it is finished when he died. And so it is up to the sons of God. In fact, if you've been listening, this is God's detailed plan that he's rolled out from the beginning uh, that, in, that includes us in Christ uh, to do the works of Christ in the earth, to advance the kingdom. And we know the famous prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's time to wake up. It's time to take responsibility. It's, to, it's time to become people willing to die and willing to take the power of God into the earth and set free all those who have been oppressed by the devil in Jesus' name. All right, so I'd like to invite you to uh, go to healjoplin.com. Right there, you're going to find months and months of uh, worth of teaching on healing certainly more than anyone needs to begin walking in divine power. But also, if you yourself need healing or someone you know needs healing and you, you would like to request prayer for that person, just fill out that form right there and uh, we'll be reaching out to you and contacting you for that. Uh, also, I would like to invite you to check out transfigured.church because we are not only teaching on healing, but we are really teaching more broadly on the kingdom and making disciples of power that follow in the footsteps of Jesus for the sake of God's long-range plan in the earth. This is the plan that God ordained from the beginning. The Bible says that Jesus was crucified or slain from the foundations of the, of the earth. And also it says that we have been chosen to be in him or he predestined us to be in him. And that means that God chose Jesus uh, to be our example, that we could follow in his footsteps, that God would gain a people uh, for himself, that he would use to bring the dominion of the kingdom of heaven to the earth. 
So transfigure.church, go check that out. Uh, you can find out what we believe and what we're teaching and also find out where we meet and when we meet. Uh, transfigured.church. All right, so uh, we are tonight, number 15. We made it through 15 teachings of John G. Lake's Secrets of Divine Healing. Um, these, these, uh, if you would just follow these or even just one of these, it will make such a huge difference in your life. You begin to walk in divine health uh, and begin to be able to speak to diseases and sicknesses uh, and things that oppress people and begin to break them off of people. But the problem is, and I'm, I'm going to teach a little bit before I get to number 15 tonight. The problem is this. The problem is that most Christians, many, many, many Christians, are living uh, according to an old covenant mindset. They still believe that God is far away, that he's up in heaven, that he's disapproving, that he's uh, somehow uh, still angry or or something, or when we pray, he doesn't hear and and he answers some people's prayer, but not others. And maybe it's not his will to heal everyone because I prayed for somebody last week and they died. Okay, you don't even know, if these are some things you believe, you don't even know what Jesus did for us. So let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about God's eternal purpose through Christ. Before the Father made anything, he had two things in mind. He knew that he wanted to have a plan that included Christ crucified before the foundation of the, of the world and that, uh, that he also chose us to be in him. Now, when God created man, he created him as uh, those who would be in dominion over the earth. Uh, subdue the earth was the command. Steward the earth was the command. And man has dominion in the earth, even uh, unsaved man still operates in dominion. I mean, we are we have dominate, dominated almost everything that can be dominated. Uh, it's in us to dominate. Uh, for example, the Wild West, the unsettled territories, it's in us to dominate those things. Um, the oceans, it's in us to dominate those things. Uh, space and space travel, it's in us to dominate those things. But how much more, and, and this is a different kind of dominance, or adding to that dominance, is God asking and looking for the sons of God to begin to step into the true role of dominance over sin, sickness, and death, and evil, uh, depravity, all of these things that have come from the kingdom of darkness, from hell, from sin, from disobedience, uh, from rebellion, all of these things, we have been uniquely called, qualified, and equipped to rule with Christ in the earth. Now, before Jesus died on the cross and was buried and, and, and he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sent his spirit back to the earth, we lived as those condemned. We were held captive by death. The only people on the planet that had any kind of an agreement with God were the Jewish people, the Jewish nation. And these people had an agreement with God, but it was not, uh, it was not the end game. It was not the final, it was not the final piece of the puzzle. It wasn't the uh, it is finished part of God's long-range plan. It is, it is, the law was to point to another time. And in fact, in Hebrews 11, which I mentioned earlier, uh, it says that we are uh, fulfilling or perfecting their faith. We, they longed to live the life that we are living. Their faith is made uh, complete in us, the Bible says, because we are living in fullness of faith, fullness of God's plan and uh, his long-range plans from before the foundations of the world. So what does this plan include? This plan includes uh, Christ being crucified, uh, buried and, and uh, raised from the dead, and seated as the victor king in heaven, and sending his spirit back to the earth. But, and we've made, this about, um, we've made this all about 
the forgiveness of sins, and certainly that is uh, included in this. But it's more, it, it, we've attached that especially to a life, an, uh, a, uh, an eternal life or an everlasting life when, uh, when we die. Okay, that's all true, but that's not the whole picture. The whole picture is that God is creating a new race of humanity. What is this new race of humanity? It is... Uh, it is those born into the family of God by the Spirit through the life of Jesus. Jesus started a brand new family in God's kingdom uh, that there would be, and he coming as the first, the firstborn among many brothers, the Bible says, that we would, in fact, he told Nicodemus, Nicodemus asking how can one enter into the kingdom. And he said, you must be born again. And so that we have this picture and this, this supernatural process that happens. When Jesus died, we died in him. And when Jesus rose from the dead, we rose with him. And this is all by faith, but it is backed by real power. Because when we put our, when we confess Jesus with our lips and we turn aside to follow King Jesus, to submit to King Jesus. Our spirits are born again, okay? Our spirits that were cut off from God are now fused with the Spirit of God. That means that we're made brand new on the inside. That means we're made perfect. Our spirits are made perfect and joined perfectly to God. There's no, there's no sin or blemish or anything like that in our spirits when we are born again. The purpose of everything that Jesus did was to get that spirit in us. Why? Because this spirit was his plan the entire time. The spirit uh, of God coming from heaven to earth, it's God's, it, it really is uh, the great culmination of God's plan and, and Jesus saying, it is finished. Jesus, remember when the uh, disciples said, teach us how to pray, he said, Pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is heaven, as it is in heaven. And that that happened on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God came into the earth and indwelt uh, those 120 in the upper room who had been praying and waiting uh, for 10 days. The sound of a, a violent wind entering in, and, and uh, thousands were swept into the kingdom that day. That day was born in the earth a brand new race of heavenly people. This new race of heavenly people has never existed on the planet before. Jesus was the first one. Why do we need a new race of heavenly people, especially if the whole plan is for us to get saved and die so that we can go to heaven? Well, that is not the plan. Uh, we've been told that, but that is really not God's plan. The plan is and has been the whole time. Uh, the, everything that Jesus did was to get his spirit in you, was to bring heaven to earth because we are here to bring order to the chaos that's been caused by depravity. We are here to kick out the author of death. We are here to subjugate all of God's enemies. In fact, God is doing that in us through Christ. We are called, and Jesus said it, uh, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely release the kingdom of heaven. And we have made this so much about uh, preaching about salvation. If you were to die tonight, you know, would you go to heaven? I don't know, but I think the, I think the bigger question is, uh, since you're alive, did heaven come to you? Has heaven infilled you? And is heaven wrecking hell around you? That is the bigger question because this is what we're called to. We, the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ is, uh, are the stewards and those responsible for carrying out every detail of God's long range plan. And we know from Ephesians, even just chapter one of Ephesians, that the culmination of God's long range plan that he started before the foundations of the world were created is that God will make a new heaven and a new earth and that we will dwell in this new heaven and new earth in immortal bodies, ruling in Christ's stead forever. The, the entire cosmos is going to be made new, 
and we are going to be made new with it. But we are not waiting till then to reign with Christ. We are to reign with Christ right now. And so that brings me to secret number 15. All right? So this is the last one. Last one. Secret number 15 from John G. Lake, Secrets of Divine Healing. Number 15, know that God is with you, in you, and for you. Know that God is with you, in you, and for you. And if you're like most believers, you believe in God, of course, and you have even uh, experienced Him, but you still believe that He's far away. You still believe that uh, sometimes He decides to heal, or sometimes He doesn't, or sometimes He decides to answer prayers, or sometimes He doesn't. And you believe that He's a far away God, seated in heaven, looking down on earth, turning His power on, turning His power off, making decisions, and we come up with uh, doctrines of men and, and theologies about why doesn't God answer or why did this person die or why do bad things happen to good people? All of these things, all the while not recognizing the, in, the entire purpose of what Jesus did. What Jesus did is fully summed up in the Spirit of God indwelling man. Okay? Now, let's just take this one by one. Know that God is with you. God has made us firstborn inheritor sons. It is completely out of character for God to ever turn his back on us. Now, we can turn our back on him, that's for sure. Uh, live in the light as he is in the light, uh, Paul exhorts us. But God can never turn his back on a firstborn born inheritor son and we have we are that people in Christ Jesus is the firstborn inheritor son he has paid the price the forgiveness of sins the forgiveness the cancellation of sins the bible says now uh, that makes us uh, uh, one with god fused with god uh, you know that makes god for us. In fact, when it says the Bible, uh, when, when, there, when it mentions the word in the New Testament, especially the word anointing, God has anointed, like when Jesus got up to read the scroll, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do these several things. The, uh, the, the word anointed is not necessarily power there, it is position, okay? God canceled your sins. So that you could be in a position for him to dwell in you. For, for you, he, he canceled our sins that you could be an inheritor of everything that God has and all that he is. Did you know the Bible promises, uh, Paul writes about this extensively, that promises that all the secrets of the kingdom be made known to us. Now, we have chosen and, and created theologies around what it looks like to be a Christian, okay? And unfortunately, most of the time, these theologies are man-made. We call them sacred cows. Uh, Paul calls them uh, man-made theologies or doctrines of demons, okay? Jesus warned about this in Mark 7, 14. He says, you cause the word of God to become null and void because you have replaced it with a, a, a theology that's created by men, and these things have been handed down to you by men, and you are doing many things like this. Jesus warned us, and we have done it in America. We have come up with a version of Christianity that follows a version of God that is veiled and not the truth and mostly stuck in Old Testament reality. The New Testament reality, the New Covenant reality, the new man reality is that we have been uh, put in a position on purpose by God that we could be filled with God himself and that we could walk on the earth as God himself. We are here in his stead carrying out every detail of his plan. God's focus is not on heaven. God's focus is not even on getting you to heaven. God's focus is getting heaven through you to the planet. That is God's focus. That is God's plan. That through you, nations would be discipled. That through you, every enemy would be put under his feet. That through you, 
Every sick person be healed, and that through you, the dead would be raised, and that through you, demons would be cast out. If it was God's plan all along to throw the earth away and forget about it just so that you could get to heaven, uh, we wouldn't have gone through, uh, Jesus wouldn't have gone through all this trouble. This is entirely about the Spirit of God dominating your life and then dominating the earth through you, okay? So the second part of this, of the, the, the second of three parts of this, know that God is with you and in you, okay? How many people, and maybe you're like this uh, yourself, uh, you, view, you view God as far away. God, where are you? And you worship and you pray, God, where are you? Okay, I'm going to tell you where, you where he is. If you have been born again, especially uh, if you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but let's just say born again, and you've had a born again experience, where is God? He is in you, in you, in you, in you, okay? And uh, that puts us in a, an incredibly powerful position, a, a more powerful position than you realize. See, we view Jesus as, uh, 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 you know, the Yahweh incarnate, and he was, who did things that we can't do, which is untrue. Everything that Jesus did was not to just prove who he is, but to prove that we could become just like him, walking a sinless life uh, and walking in power, setting people free. Uh, uh, you know, it says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth and who went about uh, setting uh, free all those who are oppressed of the devil. God is in us. Now, we have to come to grips with this. He is in us. When we pray, we're communing with him on the inside. Is he still on a throne in heaven? Yes. We have also been seated with him in heavenly places. See, this is about two becoming one. Not only has, the he has heaven come to earth that we are now indwelt by the spirit of the living God, but we are also seated with Christ in the spirit in heavenly places, and Paul goes on to describe this, far above all principality and power, rule and authority, uh, we are seated there with Christ in heavenly places. This is a two becoming one. This is heaven and earth. Uh, this is heaven and earth coming together. This is the dominance of the rule of the kingdom of heaven, the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven uh, coming to the earth in the form of light, dominion, power, and authority through a new race of people. And this new race of people is described multiple different ways, but the most popular ways that we're probably most familiar with, especially in the Western world, is the body of Christ, the ecclesia. And we taught on that, uh, what that word means, ecclesia. Also, it talks about we are his temple being built up, okay? There is a building up of a literal temple of God in the earth, but not from uh, bricks and uh, uh, and walls of stone, but through living stones, we, the the people that God anointed to become uh, those that were in a position to receive the spirit or the indwelling of God, now are being built up into this temple. Why? Why is it important that there is a temple of living stones being built up into the earth? Because at the culmination of this, it says that God is going, that Jesus is going to return. Uh, and, and we have that dramatic picture and language and Paul teaches on this uh, throughout the New Testament. And also we read about in Revelation where Jesus in the fulfillment and the culmination of the ages that uh, this this temple is going to be filled with the actual Jesus, okay? We're going to see Jesus uh, on the earth ruling in power with his people. We're not in this to go to heaven forever, all right? We're not in this to, to go live in heaven. We're in this so that heaven can find a dwelling place on earth, that the righteousness of God would completely transform all, all created things, so that heaven is at home on the earth and that there is no more rule of darkness uh, to any degree. This is where we're going for complete dominion, complete dominion, complete dominion on earth as it is in heaven. So God is in you. God is in you. 
And the third part of this uh, last secret of John G. Lake, God is for you. He has everything wrapped up in your obedience to walk in the earth as a son of God, destroying the works of the devil. As to walk in the earth as a son of God, setting people, setting up those free who are oppressed by the devil. Everything God has done through Christ is resting on the shoulders of our obedience, our faith, our obedience, our ability to release the spirit and power of God from within us into the planet. All right, now let's talk about this in terms of healing. I wanted to read a scripture here. I'm not sure I'll get to it. It's uh, out of Acts 1. It talks about, um, I'll just read it now. Don't leave Jerusalem, Jesus said, but wait here until you receive the gift I told you about. The gift is this spirit. Uh, the Spirit of God, the gift the Father has promised. For John baptized you in water, but in a few days from now, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Every time they were gathered together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is it now the time for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He answered, the Father is the one who sets the fixed dates and the times of their fulfillment. You are not permitted to know the timing of all that he has prepared uh, by his own authority, but I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be seized with power. Seized with power and you will be my messengers to Jerusalem throughout Judea, the distant provinces, provinces even to the remotest places on earth. So God uh, sent through Jesus the Spirit that we might be seized with power. And uh, one of the last things that Jesus said to his disciples before he uh, ascended into heaven was, uh, make disciples of all nations and teach them to obey all the things I have commanded you. In other words, Jesus modeled what it was like to be, uh, we say this, he was the most normal Christian, okay? That is the standard. And then he said, you will do even greater works than this. So how does this, uh, how does this affect us concerning healing? How does this affect us when we're uh, speaking of uh, setting people free? When we're sp speaking of, uh, you know, breaking chains of addiction, bondage, and disease off of people, okay? This is how it works. Now, this is the model that Jesus uh, gave us. We are not asking the Father to heal anyone, to deliver anyone, to set anyone free, uh, to raise anyone from the dead. Jesus never prayed to the Father to do that. Not only that, no, none of the disciples or apostles did that either. Here's why. They understood something, and Paul teaches on it, uh, very well, uh, but it's not taught much uh, very often. We don't hear it taught much. I'm going to teach a very, uh, a very abbreviated uh, revelation of what, it's, what it means to be a, this new heavenly race of people, okay? Now, we have, if we have the Spirit of God within us, and, that's, and that Spirit is released from us, that power is what does the work of Jesus in the earth. So when we lay hands, uh, or we, let's, let me say this, when we do anything in faith, power is released. That's how we can get uh, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now that's not most people's testimony, that whatever things we pray, believe that receiving them when we and we have them mostly it's you know we prayed for brother so-and-so when he died or you got sicker okay this is not normal okay what is normal that when we speak power is released now when we say be healed where does the power come from it doesn't fall out of the sky it comes from our spirit our spirits have been made one with the holy spirit now that spirit within us is the same spirit and power that causes us to live in divine health. It causes us to reject disease and death. It causes us, and the Bible says, your mortal body be quickened by the spirit of God within us. That power within us, now whether you know it's dormant in you or not, that's not God's problem, that's your problem, that's my problem, okay? 
But when we do anything in faith, uh, the promise is that the Father will do it, okay? So when we lay our hands on someone and they die instead of getting healed, it's not God's fault. Why? Because he's given us his spirit, he's given us his power, and he's given us uh, his authority. See, this is why Jesus said, heal the sick. It's See, if, if it wasn't this way, Jesus would have said, ask the Father to raise up the sick people. But he put the responsibility within us, on us, in us, okay? This is how God is with us. He's in us. He's for us. Why? Because he gave us the responsibility to act in power through faith, all right? So when we say, be healed, we, we are not asking the Father to release some kind of a blessing from heaven, some kind of a healing power from heaven. Or when we say be healed and it doesn't happen, we're like, well, it must not have been God's will. That's the most idiotic, crazy thing. Uh, that's a doctrine of demons, okay? Now, we've got to put the blame squarely on ourselves. okay? The Bible declares that those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. <clears throat> so, we know... From the many, many stories written about Jesus and uh, the apostles, that everyone they touched was healed. Everyone they ministered healing to, spoke life to, was healed. That's important to understand because we uh, can put the pieces together and see that God gave us the power and the ability. This is what dunamis is, this is what power is supernatural ability to do uh, the will of God in the earth. The will of God is to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God opened a brand new world through Jesus. Uh, he opened a, a door to a brand new world through Jesus and invited everyone into it. And the sons of God are the ones that are stewarding this new world. And we have the power within us by the Spirit to do the works of Jesus and even greater. So, the, the moment you are born again, the moment anyone is born again, uh, they breathe uh, their first breath as a born-again believer. They have the same ability as Paul the Apostle. They have the same ability, speaking of power, speaking of healing. They have the same, listen, they, I'll say it this way. They have the same amount of power available to them as Jesus, as Paul the Apostle, as Peter, as your favorite, uh, whoever that you're following today, uh, there's no apostle, there's no pastor, teacher, evangelist, apostle, prophet that has more power than the born again, uh, the newly born again believer. Why? Because power comes from the Spirit. And that scripture I read in Acts 1, you will be seized with power. This is where power comes from, the Spirit of God. Where is the Spirit of God? Is he just floating around the earth randomly? No, he is in his people. This is how, see, do you remember when Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Jesus is even, uh, before he died, enlightening us to the new humanity that's about to burst forth in the earth uh, Jesus described himself as a seed that falls to the ground that produces a great harvest. And we, the sons of God, are this great harvest of righteousness in the earth. And in fact, God himself, the Father, is reaping a harvest or an inheritance through us. This inheritance is gained by the spirit of power. Why else would we heal the sick, be commanded to? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. See, we've cast aside the uh, the words of God uh, and we've cast aside obedience to things that require power because the enemy, is uh, his kingdom is undone by it. And uh, the only way that he can get us to stop uh, acting in power, which is his greatest undoing, is to begin to formulate doctrines and theologies and ideas and insert them into the church so that we would stop, okay? The devil has two methods to stop you, uh, to get you to believe in lies or to kill you, okay? And if you begin to operate in power, he will do everything he can to confront you, okay, with sickness, disease, or he will confront you with discouragement, or he will persecute you, okay? You know, that's not, that, that thing you're teaching, just look through history, 
people were burned at the stake and hung and and uh, cut into little pieces because they taught the truth. <laughs> you know, when we begin to teach and preach with power and demonstrate power, persecution is coming. Jesus promised it because uh, he said it's enough that they will treat the disciple like the master. You will be treated uh, like they treated me. Now, the, key, the thing is that uh, we back off from this radical martyr life that Jesus has called us to. He said, you will be our witnesses and go into all the earth. And that word witness is literally martyr. And we have to live as those who are dead to our own lives in order to step into this power. It's a radical, radical, radical call. I was just watching a clip of um, uh, the lady. She's actually from Missouri. Um Catherine Kuhlman, and she was talking about um, that, you know, salvation is free and being born again is free, but to follow Jesus will cost you everything. It will cost you everything, okay? So, have you ever wondered, and I'm going to try to sum this up here, have you ever wondered in the book of Revelation when, uh, when Jesus says to those uh, at the, I believe this is a story about the wedding feast, and he asks, he confronts these, and he says to them, why are you here? And uh, he said, I don't know you, to these people. And they're like, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do mighty miracles in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name? And he's like, you must go. Uh, get out of here, because I never knew you. And have you ever thought about that and wondered why, how is it possible to do miracles, to prophesy, to cast out demons, and, and do the works of God, uh, release and power like that, and still not know Jesus? I tell you, it's simple, okay? The Spirit of God is in us for power. The Spirit of God indwells us like a river. The Spirit of God is in us for the subjugation of of his enemies. And people can figure out how to operate in that power and not know Jesus. Why? Because that power rushes out of us. See, the only reason, it's, see, it's abnormal for anyone <clears throat> to be born again and this power not explode through our lives. There's only one thing that can keep us from exploding with this supernatural uh, ability in the power of God, and that is believing traditions handed down to us, traditions created by men, traditions and doctrines created by demons. When we begin to lit, uh, believe lies about who we are, lies that go against the Word of God, or that's according to Mark 7, 14, that nullify the Word of God, then we begin to see the river shut off from within us. We begin to see Christians live lives without power, okay? And Paul said, we're not, we're not living this life or preaching this gospel in word only, okay? It's power. It's all about power. Power is what strengthens us on the inside. Power is what uh, causes us to obtain revelation of Jesus. Power is what causes us to grow in God, power is what uh, causes us to be able to walk just like Jesus. Be able to walk and do the works of God in the earth. To heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. Now, Romans 8 says that all creation groans, longing for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because against its will, creation was made subject to the futility of sin. Literally, creation is in bondage. People are in bondage against its will because of sin. Who has the power to turn this around? According to God's long-range plan, according to the Spirit of God in a new creation race of heavenly people, it's the sons of God here walking as Jesus. There's literally no difference between us and Jesus concerning the ability that is within us to fulfill every detail of God's long-range plan. As we awaken to this, as we begin to realize this, as we let go of our lives 
and pursue Jesus and follow in his footsteps and begin to gain revelation of these truths that the Spirit of God is in us like a river to release all of creation from the futility of sin, from the bondage of darkness, then we will begin to walk in it. Here's the truth about healing, about power, about deliverance. You have the ability to release the power of God at will. We can release the power of God at will. It is within us. We are carrying this treasure in vessels of clay, the Bible says. Now, if you're not seeing results when you pray, if you're not seeing results uh, when you uh, speak to sickness and disease, then you must begin to deal with this. I must begin to deal with this. The standard is that Jesus gave to us and even the apostles gave to us. Our heritage is 100% of healing, 100% of the time. No exceptions. There are no exceptions in the Bible. Now, you may have been taught that there are, but those are uh, uh, sacred cow theologies. Those are doctrines of demons. Those are theologies created by men that came from the enemy to get you to let up to get you to let off, to get you to believe a lie so that the, the flow of God's eternal life through you would be damned up. And that is exactly what has happened to most believers. The river is damned. It is damned up. It is walled off. Even Jesus warned us, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel. No one, uh, you know, Guard your heart because out of it flow the issues of life. See, these are all things that the Sermon on the Mount, you know, these are all things that have to do with our inner man because in our inner man is the indwelling of God himself. God wants to step out of our inner man into creation and transform it. Transform it by setting it free. Transform it by renewing it and transforming it by bringing it in line with every detail of his long-range plan that God has had from the beginning, beginning, even before he laid the foundations of the world. He chose Christ to be crucified, and he chose us to be in him for the sake of a new creation race of heavenly people that would be indwelled by God himself, that would walk in the image of Jesus doing the works of Jesus, and even greater until the culmination of the ages come together and, the, and Jesus rides uh, back on this white horse uh, with all the, the saints uh, that are with him. And uh, with the trump of God and the shadow of an archangel, uh, we're going to see the dead in Christ rise and those of us who are alive and remain, uh, we shall have the hope of our salvation, Paul calls it, the uh, putting on of immortality. We are getting an immortal body, and we are not waiting till that moment, though, to reign with Christ. We are called to reign with Him now. On earth, as it is in heaven, your kingdom come, and He has put that divine, supernatural ability within us. How? By the Spirit of God. This is why Jesus said, wait in, Jer uh, in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father. Because in the promise is the power. And in the promise is the ability to do the works of God required to fulfill every detail of this long-range plan. So, we have to deal with our failure when it comes to power. We have to deal with and embrace the gap between where Jesus is and where we are. Okay, right here, this gap where nothing's happening, where you just go to church and sit in a pew, right between you and Jesus is a cross, and you must get on it, and you must die that he could resurrect through you, that he could live a resurrected life in you as you walk in the earth. There is nothing greater. This is the most glorious thing that anyone could experience, this divine life union with God on the planet. It's exhilarating. It's incredible. We don't realize what God has done for us in Christ. He has gained for himself a new creation race of people, and we are that 
People living in total dominion over sin, living in total dominion over sickness and disease, living in total dominion over the enemy of our God, over every principality and power, we have the ability to, to make every city a divine health zone. We have the ability to disciple nations until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Christ. Who's holding this up? It's not God. He has done it all. Jesus said, it is finished. Who are the ones that are causing this plan of God to be, uh, to be quickened or to be slowed down or to be hindered? It is us. It is only us. It is only the sons of God. It's not even the devil. It's not the enemy. It's not principalities and powers. It is the obedience of the sons of God that either hasten or delay the coming of the return of the Lord. They either hasten or delay the transformation and the setting free of all creation. And that is why creation longs for the manifestation of the sons of God, uh, implying that we are not seeing even yet what is possible through the sons of God in the earth. We haven't even scratched the surface of what it's going to look like for the reigning dominion life of Christ lived out through this new creation race of heavenly people. It is glorious and it is wonderful and it is almost beyond comprehension that we have the Spirit of God so that we can begin to understand these things. No secret of the kingdom is hidden from us, Paul writes. We have access to all that God is and all that he has right here. This is the point. Not that we can access it after we die, but that we can access it now right now, by the Spirit. The command of Jesus to his disciples is our command now. We know this because of Matthew 28, baptizing them, every nation, uh, teaching them to obey all the things I have commanded you. What are the commands of Jesus? Uh, you can read them, all the letters in red. But we know he said, go preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means that God's new creation race of people is ruling in dominion by the Spirit's power. This is your day because the kingdom is at hand and freedom is available. Salvation is available. Dominion is available. New life is available for you to be re created in your spirit preach saying the kingdom is at hand heal the sick raise the dead cast out demons freely release this kingdom of heaven because you freely received it this is the glorious destiny mandate and thing that we have been made responsible for as the sons of god so i'm going to say it one more time so many people are having trouble, trouble believing this. Just read your Bible, all right? Number 15, know that God is with you, in you, and for you. He has not forgotten about you. How could he? You are a firstborn inheritor son. Everything that he did in Jesus, he did so that he could indwell you. But we have we are so we are living such a selfish, fleshly veiled life that we don't even realize what's within us. We don't even realize what's within us. And this is the great adventure, the great call that we could deny ourselves, that we could die to ourselves, that we could begin to live this glorious new creation life of light and glory and power, putting on display for all nations the evidence of Jesus Christ's resurrection in the earth as demonstrated through his new creation race of heavenly people. All right. This is the gospel, by the way. So tonight, if you are dealing with sickness, disease, pain, death, whatever it is that's attached itself to you, I want to speak to it now in Jesus' name. Pain, go. Sickness, go. Death, go. Go in Jesus' name. Disease, go. Be loosed of your affliction. 
you will suffer no longer. Be filled with the spirit and fire of the spirit of God in Jesus' name and get up on your feet and be a radiant display of the spirit of God in the earth. A glorious sun walking in fire, walking in spirit, walking in power, walking in light as he is in the light. Every chain come off of you. Be delivered now in Jesus' name. And you uh, and your entire household be filled with the Holy Spirit and miraculous ability right now in the name of Jesus. Let these words renew your mind. Believe, believe, believe. That's what we are, right? We are believers, so start believing. Start believing. Start believing in Jesus' name. And uh, we'll begin to see this new life take off from within us together. What a glorious revelation. What a glorious reality that we have as believers um, in Christ. And what, what amazing things that he has done for us in the earth. And what an honor and what a privilege to be associated with Jesus in such an amazing long-range plan for millennia. The, the people, the, the people of the earth have been looking to the lives that we get to live, okay? We cannot, we cannot relegate this and dumb it down to sitting in a pew on Sunday. You are a son of God and you are born to change the world in Jesus' name. All right, prayer requests, healjoplin.com. Uh, also, uh, check us out at transfigured.church. This is just a taste of what we teach on. Uh, everything is held in the tension of God's long-range plan through Christ. So, of course, all of our teaching uh, goes back to that. All of our teaching flows from this uh, revelation of Jesus Christ in the earth, and it's powerful and transformative. It will change your life. All right, so uh, this is the Christmas holiday season thing. Um, we are uh, going to end here with our live stream healing and we are going to uh, take a break from teaching online uh, during the week. Uh, my wife and I will still come on and teach uh, on Sundays at 1.30. And then we have our uh, in-person gatherings at 3 p.m. So no more uh, midweek teachings anymore uh, for the remainder of the year. Uh, we're taking a break for that. Also, at the beginning of the year, we do uh, many, uh, many weeks together of uh, heavy fasting and prayer. So be seeking the Lord. Uh, we might come back and do something like on a Wednesday night. I'm not sure yet. But the point uh, of uh, the, the break that we're taking from streaming here uh, is to seek God, is to seek heaven, is to adjust ourselves uh, to seek heaven. And the Bible promises that when we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. And we want to be so lit, so bright, so uh, walking in the dominion of Jesus in the earth that nations are, uh, are transformed and discipled for the kingdom of heaven. We can do it. If everyone uh, within the sound of my voice would rise up and believe the things that I have taught just tonight, we could see in one generation the nations of the earth uh, transformed uh, and brought into the kingdom of heaven. Okay, but it's not going to come like we've uh, with a traditional American gospel church believing uh, mentality, okay? It's going to come with a radical martyrdom mentality, willing to die, uh, living for one thing, to possess heaven and release it in the earth. And we die to ourselves willingly and, uh, uh, and on purpose that we might release the full power of the authority of the kingdom of heaven to everyone we meet, that everyone would be healed, that everyone we pray for or speak to that's dead would get up, and that every person would be released from demonic bondage in Jesus' name. So uh, take this time. Seek heaven. You know what? The, this thing, this pandemic that's on us, uh, you know, what if something greater and worse comes on the earth? Who knows? But the earth is looking to us to be active and essential on the planet. See, if we are not, then the planet's going to suffer. The planet is suffering right now, and people are suffering right now. We've got to become active and essential, and we've got to come online as the glorious sons of God that 
heaven is calling for and longing for, and even all of creation, according to Romans 8. So thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, we'll be back this Sunday. And hope everyone has a great holiday season, and we'll see you soon.